All right, people. Max Alden here again. Welcome back to some more Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode. Uh, today I'm going to be getting rid of Auntie Ethel and her red caps, and also the guy who's around here in this swamp, who's after uh, Asterian. I hadn't broken the illusion yet on this place, uh, so I had to attack a random sheep, which is really just a red cap in disguise. And then that'll lift the illusion magic that makes this swamp look like a sunny uh, sort of wetlands or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't think it really matters if you pass any check to break the illusion earlier or anything. But yeah, I just didn't pass it the first time so I had to start combat like this in order to get the illusion to go away. These red caps, um, they can be dangerous. But since we're doing my usual uh, stealthy shenanigans of sneaking in one party member at a time, getting uh, some archery uh, stealth attacks on them, it shouldn't be too bad. And anti Ethel will be the real problem. Uh, this footage of me taking out the uh, red caps is actually from a little while ago in my playthrough. We've kind of jumped back in time here. Uh, but I just took them down for some handy XP before doing other things. But I would take them out now before you fight Auntie Ethel. Because I can't remember if they get brought into the fight or not. Uh, but I think they'll just be hostile after you take out Auntie Ethel. And you'll have to deal with them on the way out of here uh, if you don't take them out now. And it's always better to just farm more XP. So yeah, I just took them out, uh, went to do some other stuff, and then came back later to get Auntie Ethel. But I'm going to put my footage here uh, of me taking out the red caps because I think most people will do them at the same time rather than split them up the way I did. Um, uh, again, Carlac sneaking in. She's disguised as a Gith Yankee with be so she can get the full benefits of her big Gith Yankee weapon. Uh, She's not going to be in too much danger here from anyone. Uh, I left Shadowheart over here with her big returning pike. Uh, I think she'll climb up onto this rock. Just to get a bit of high ground. Uh, so she can have more of a chance of hitting someone. With her throw. Because I again just like getting her to throw in spears. She's got like a load of javelins and stuff in her inventory. Just in case the returning pike doesn't return. Uh, I think she knocked that guy pro and that was nice uh, and he's surprised um, everybody else now the trouble is they're a bit far away from that guy or this guy uh, so they'll have to uh, we'll have to uh, move in closer to them uh, who's the most wounded that guy's pretty far away um, can Carlac hit him with the giant breaker bow not a lot of damage, but oh well, we wounded him a little. And this is back before I respect Carlac into a fighter. This is when she was still a barbarian, so she can still frenzy. And again, this was uh, this footage is a little from before where my current playthrough is at. Uh, but I just uh, want the red caps out of the way earlier. And it didn't really make sense to make a short, like five minute video on taking out red caps. So I thought I would just save the footage for when we were going to take out Auntie Ethel properly. Um, so yeah, that's why Carlac doesn't have her Hell Dusk armor or anything. Uh, if people are wondering, uh, who watched my older videos on my Honor Mode playthrough, uh, they're probably also wondering why my main character was disguised as a uh, Drow Elf. That's because I was doing a lot of stuff sneaking into the goblin camp and talk my way past the goblins. And they sort of respect you if you're a drow elf. Uh, they don't bother you really. So that's why my main character is a drow right now. Um, but yeah, there's nothing really else to say about this fight. It's pretty simple really. If you come at them uh, when they're all spread out and they're not all surrounding you together, these red caps aren't too much trouble. Uh, yeah, of course you missed that shot from that distance. I don't know what I was doing there. Um, yeah, just put Sanctuary on yourself, Shadow Hearts, so this red cap uh, can't do anything. And we put Reverberation on them when we did that. 
Uh, okay, Carl, like just you jump up here and just smack him. Nice. Come on, get him again, put him down. No, he's still got a bit of health left. Um, don't think my main character can hit him from here. We'll try it. Oh, we can, and we put him down. So nice, that's the red caps out of the way. Uh, now there's this guy who, he's hunting Asterian. He's some sort of, like, monster hunter or something. You can get a pretty decent crossbow off him, which will do damage to monstrosity type enemies. Um, I'm just going to take him down for the XP. You can talk to him and persuade him to go away or lie to him about not knowing Asterian uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but because this is honor mode and we kind of need all the XP we can get, we're just going to take this guy out. Uh, of course, left the party waiting back here so they can sneak in now that he's, his back's turned and he's facing Karlak. Um, and we can just do some more damage to him. Um, he doesn't really stand a chance here. Four on one. Uh, and we have the stealth advantage. To kick off each of our shots. Maybe it's only going to take me and Karlak to put him down. Yeah he didn't stand a chance. But yeah I, I would take him down when you're on your way to Auntie Ethel as well. Skipping forward a bit. This is just the conversation you can have with her. She's going to offer to take out your eye. Which will help you somehow. But it's just a scam really. I don't think. All it does is give you like a damaged eyesight uh, debuff I'm pretty sure. Uh, so yeah we just ignored her. Uh, I had Asterian sneak, uh, sneak down after uh, Ethel sends Myrina away. Had him sneak down past everyone through the fireplace. Let her out of her cage early so that when the main fight kicks off uh, and Ethel usually sets the cage on fire, you're not going to have to worry about her. It's, all, it's always been kind of annoying to me that you can sneak down here, free her, and then she refuses to sneak out with you. Um, that's always been kind of annoying because there's a back entrance to get out of there through a ring of mushrooms that can transport you out. And it's always kind of annoyed me that you couldn't do that, but oh well. Uh, now jumping back, uh, Asterian has looped around back to collect the party and they've all s snuck into Ethel's hideout now. Um, we're going to take out the Whisper and Mask people that are down here. Uh, this one over here you should probably do non-lethal strikes to if you care about the story because that one can be saved. Everybody else, uh, they're too far gone. If you take their mask off, they'll just uh, perish. But if you defeat Auntie Ethel and take off the mask of that one on the left, and you were using non-lethal strikes so that they were just knocked out, uh, they'll be able to get up again and have a conversation with you. And they will survive this encounter. But all the other whispering masks, there's nothing really we can do to help them. Uh, they've been possessed for too long or whatever. And yeah, you just you just can't really help them, to be honest. Um, so you should just take them out. Um, yeah, Mask Servitude, uh, you're also too possessed. So yeah, we're just kind of wiping the floor with them, getting a stealthy advantage. Dread Ambusher, come on, put them down. Oh, missed. Um, Asterian... I'll uh, swap the car back actually. Uh, she can sneak up behind this one that we kind of want to keep alive. You don't have to keep her alive if you don't want to, but maybe some people don't know that uh, this person can be saved. Mask of Regret, uh, so we'll just smack her. If you do archery attacks, even with non-lethal on, it doesn't really help. Uh, they'll, they'll still die. Uh, but if you're using a sword and doing big sword strikes, uh, you knock them out. So I'm going to try to daze her. Missed that, that would have been perfect. Don't want to waste action surge just against the mask people because it's not really worth it. We'll save that for Ethel. And the way I'm going to fight Ethel is where we actually drive her down into her hideout. Uh, so that we can get her health really low. 
and then she's gonna offer uh, to give us some of her hair which we can power up a stat permanently if we take it and in honor mode you're really gonna want to do that okay so I knocked out that mask with shadow heart and now we've just got this guy over here to take down uh, who's gonna do that okay uh, Sterian just uh, oh, he's too far away so we'll just snipe him now don't remove any masks just yet uh, from that knocked out character because Ethel's still alive uh, okay Asterion he's gonna go back outside around this way uh, yeah we're gonna get that walking on air inspiration for using the magic mushroom uh, the magic mushroom circle uh, we're gonna lock pick this door to get back into Ethel's house uh, and now we're gonna start a fight with her and drive her into the basement uh, you should definitely use the mushrooms to get that inspiration because uh, depending on a conversation afterward uh, I tried to rob her and that kicked off the fight but you can just attack her straight up uh, but yeah, you're going to want to use the Mushroom Circle just to get that inspiration if you're light on inspiration. Because there's a conversation that happens after the fight where you might want to be able to persuade Auntie Ethel to leave Myrina with you. And give you her hair at the same time. Uh, but if you can't pass that skill check and you just want the power uh, because you don't care about the story because it's your like fifth playthrough and you're in honor mode... Uh, you don't have to try to save Marina if you don't want to. Um, but yeah, that's why I went and got that inspiration. Uh, we're just attacking her here. We don't want to defeat her up here. I think it would be possible with how much damage we're doing. But we're just kind of trying to do enough damage so that she like uh, wanders off into her basement uh, and tries to escape. Um, so I didn't really need to be sneaking about here at this point. Um, yeah, I think I was trying to apply an effect to her, like acid damage or something. That will show up in her stats, so when she clones herself later, I'd be able to tell which ones is her. Uh, I think I wounded us staring a little. Um, we're really messing her up. I think I could have taken her out up here if we wanted to. Tried to apply Hunter's Mark, because I thought that would stay applied. And I would be able to see it later. But I don't think it works. Um, now she breaks the illusion. On her stairway. Uh, or fireplace. And she runs downstairs. Downstairs into her main. Sort of hideout. Um, uh, so we're just going to skip along. Until I was back in here. She's going to show up. Uh, threaten us. Uh, tell us to get out of here. Uh, and all that stuff. Um. But we're just we're not gonna care about any of that. We've took out all our helpers so that they can't be summoned into this fight. Now Asterian, I had a uh, Volo, uh, the bard guy, uh, take out his eye so he can see invisibility. Now he has that ability. I had it done to Asterian because he's like my scout. He like always sneaks ahead and uh, sort of scouts things out for us. And the Ethel is around here somewhere. I couldn't remember exactly where. I almost walked into her uh, line of vision, which would have been bad, but yeah, we popped her, uh, she's been revealed, so uh, now, I probably could have applied Hunter's Mark to her now, uh, so it would have stayed on her, and then we would know which one is the real one, um, do I try that, oh yeah, I did try that again, for some reason this doesn't work, uh, I don't think, um, did she save Hunter's Mark? Is that maybe what happened? So she cloned herself. Um, is this the real her? Yeah, I was looking for one that had Hunter's Mark on now, but I couldn't find it. I think she saved Hunter's Mark. Um, so yeah, I was looking around. And I knew there was a way to see in her stats the real one. And I couldn't remember quite what it was. But it's one of these uh, notable... Uh, passive features or whatever she has and i was like um there's one of these that has a different one that proves which the real ethel is uh so they have the same 
And I think it's this one. Yeah, see, she has Fey Life uh, in her notable passives or whatever. Uh, Fey Life, only the real Ethel has that. Uh, so I knew this was her now. Um, uh, we didn't have to worry about the other ones. I was just double checking. Yeah, these ones don't have Fey Life. So here's our real target. So don't worry about aiming at anyone else. And now we're going to try to get her health down to below like 25 hit points. And that's when she'll try to negotiate with you. If you keep her alive that long. Uh, she'll try to make a bargain to uh, not be killed. Because she tells us that uh, she can come back anyway. And we'd be wasting her time. And um, Because it's honor mode we really want the plus one. Uh, that her hair is going to give us uh, to one of our main abilities on one of our characters. I think Asterion, he's got 19 dexterity at the moment. Uh, because of the graceful cloth he's wearing. And then I'm just going to give him Ethel's hair. And then he can have 20 dexterity. And uh, just be a really even better at sneaking around and doing damage for us from stealth. So yeah, we're carving up Ethel nicely here. Um... Uh, again, as usual, Karlak and Shadowheart were just hiding outside of uh, the battle arena so they could sneak in. So Karlak can do some pretty big damage here. Um, do I do just Soul Breaker? Yeah, that's what I went for. Just try to Soul Breaker her. Uh, another big hit. Her health is coming down nicely. But you have to be careful that you don't fully wipe her out. Or else you're not going to get the conversation. So she was down at 25. I think I was 25 or 26 hit points. Um, if I do one more big sword strike. I'm pretty sure I would. I would have taken her out completely. So I action surge. And I think. Do I go for one that does 8. Yeah this cleave does 8 to 14 damage. So I can't really take her out here. I don't think. So I went for that one. Now she's at sub 25 HP. I could attack her again. But this would have completely wiped her health bar. And I wouldn't have got the conversation. So I think I just. Uh, I, I was waiting. I thought she would automatically go into a conversation here. But I think because she's stunned or something. That she's not able to. And then I was thinking. Uh, maybe it's because her clones are still out. Uh, and they haven't had their turn yet. So we, we have to let them have a turn. Uh, Psionic Backlash sorts out them pretty easily there. We took out that one. The rest are going to get in some hits. But we're not too worried because Ethel's so badly wounded. So yeah, they're all going to get a turn. Try to poison us. Uh, yeah, I think Carlac's the main target. So she gets poisoned twice. They missed me twice, which was nice. And then finally Ethel, she tries to surrender. And we're going to let her surrender. Um, but again, I, I just for the sake of it, I wanted to save Marina. Even though you don't have to. You can just take her deal if you don't care about the story on this playthrough. But I kind of wanted to uh, deceive her. And take Marina and get her hair. Uh, Asterion's like, yeah, this is a good deal. Uh, immediately um, but I didn't really have enough like uh, plus ones or whatever to help me out here and then I remembered Shadowheart was outside this conversation so I was gonna have her sneak up and she can apply bless or guidance on me just so I have a plus four chance uh, to increase this deception check uh, so then I went for it and I had some inspiration. You do have to get a 20 so it is pretty tricky. Uh, first one failed. Uh, so I have to re-roll that and use some of my inspiration. That's why you went through the mushroom circle just to get some inspiration. Got a 19 and a plus 3 and thankfully we got 22. Past that check. So we're going to get our hair and we're going to get Marina. And everybody approves that we've tricked Auntie Ethel. So she threw down some hair. Uh, yeah, pretty gross. But we're going to give it to Asterion. Uh, so you're going to have to eat it, Asterion. 
Sorry, buddy, uh, but it's worth it because it's going to take you from 19 dexterity to 20. And you're just going to be really helpful uh, when you have that level of dexterity. And uh, we'll be seeing Aunt Ethel later in Act 3. Uh, although we don't have to fight her there if we don't want to. And yeah, I just said best of luck to her because... Uh, well, I just thought it was funny to act like we're still friends with her. Um, so yeah, here's your reward. Uh, the cutscene started playing in the background. Uh, I took the strand of hair that's going to give us extra dexterity. Uh, to put a plus one on Asterian, because he's the one who can really benefit from it. You could all you could also give it to Carlac to improve her strength, but because she's got the Hell Dusk armor and everything now, uh, that doesn't really matter too much. So I thought, you know what, Asterian taking him to twenty dexterity, that's going to be pretty good for us. Um, it's going to make his stealing even better. He's already the best thief possible, but. Yeah, he's going to have a better chance to steal even uh, riskier goods or whatever. And yeah, you can do the whole thing with Myrina now where you go get the wand uh, that Auntie Ethel had in her hideout. Go upstairs, help her resurrect her husband who's going to be a zombie. Uh, and then you'll see them again in Act 3. So uh, yeah, we'll just give us stare in this hair. Um... That fight went really well. We took her down pretty quickly. And that's pretty much everything for Act 1. Though I'm going to do maybe one more small video where I take out the Zentrum hideout. And maybe show some alternative fights. Like an alternative har Harpy fight. And an alternative uh, Minthara fight that I did. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens, but we should be moving to Act 2 soon. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.